Hey, Wonder Hussy here. Nearing the end of another beautiful day here in the high desert of central Nevada. And you'll never guess where I just pulled in. That's right, I'm at another hot spring. <laughs> never been to this one before. Uh, somebody just told me about it uh, a few days ago. Some uh, One of my viewers uh, kind of tipped me off, said she went there and had a really nice soak, sent me some pics. I thought, well, heck, why not? I'll go check it out. I did have it pinned on my map. Uh, I just, for whatever reason, had never gotten around to coming out to this extremely desolate part of the country. When I say this place is desolate, I mean, I had to go down a pretty desolate highway and then turn down another even more desolate highway and then turn onto a desolate gravel road and then turn off onto a even more desolate dirt road. <laughs> and well, is there any wonder nobody's here? So I went ahead and parked there, uh, kind of little turn off on the side of the road. There's a fire ring there. So I'm assuming that's okay to camp there. It's, you know, obviously it's not too close to the springs. Here's the trail that leads to the springs. And this trail actually looks like it's used more by cows. <laughs> saw a lot of hoof prints, uh, but I also saw some sneaker prints. Oh, wow, look, there's another big pond. I wonder if that's warm. I didn't bring my thermometer with me because, oh, wow, it's, it's bubbling down there. Dang, I better go get my thermometer, but I just wanted to come do like a little recon mission before I, you know, really decided if I wanted to put my bathrobe on and everything and, you know, really get into this. Because I was sort of assuming this stock tank was the place to soak. Let's see. Oh yeah, look at that. There's water running out into it. I mean, yeah, it's a little bit scummy, but I've soaked in worse. Let me feel it. Oh, feels amazing. I'm gonna guess, oh gosh, probably like 102, 103. I'll go get my thermometer though. Now that I know there is a place I can soak and well, I might even be able to heat my boil in the bag food up in one of those other ponds. I got. I guess let me go get my thermometer first and then I'll, uh, I'll see what's what. Man, hot spring or no, this is just an extremely beautiful, I guess you would call this like a high desert meadow. It's freaking gorgeous. But the hot spring definitely makes it that much more gorgeous. Okay, this pond here, I don't know. It looks like it maybe used to be a swimming tub or something, because look at the little concrete thing in it. And there's like a little stone wall built up there. I wonder if there was like a little hot spring, well, I hesitate to say resort, Okay, I changed into my bathrobe and I got my thermometer. I've got, well, I brought my boil in the bag food in case one of these ponds is hot enough. And I poured myself a glass of wine. And now it's time to go enjoy a sunset soak. But actually, before we go over there, this quick, quick look around this valley. It's interesting because it looks like there used to be a, well, I don't know if this was a, I guess this was a trailer, a mobile home. Like there was some kind of, ranch or settlement out here at one time. I mean, looks like it was a long time ago because that thing, <laughs> that thing hasn't been standing in a minute and a half, but there's a lot of debris strewn in this meadow all over the place. Uh, back over there, it looked like there was like another trailer. So I'm not really sure what happened to the people who lived here or why they left. You can even see over this way, there's just junk everywhere dotting this beautiful meadow. I'm not sure. Well, you know what? Maybe I'll just go soak now and then, well, I was planning to camp out overnight here, so I'll do some exploring in the morning. Okay, let's check out this first pond that we came by. Let's see how hot this is. Man, it sure would be nice if it was hot enough for me to cook my dinner because 124, uh, that's pretty hot, but I don't think that's really hot enough to heat up Indian food. Let me try the other pond. What I was gonna say was, uh, It'd be nice if the water is hot enough for me to just plop my Indian food in it uh, to heat up while I'm soaking. And that way I can soak till the sun goes down and then my dinner will be ready. I won't have to fuss around with my stove. Okay, well, here's that bubbling pool. But you know what? I'm gonna save that one for last. I'm gonna go over and do this cement one first. Let's see. Check this guy out. 60! Burr, no thanks. Okay, so this must have been like the cold swimming pool. All right, let's try this guy. I feel like Goldilocks. <laughs> mm, 123, Ah oh, man. 
Ooh, that's not hot enough. <laughs> I mean, it's hot enough to soak in, too hot to soak in, but it's not really hot enough to heat up uh, Indian food. There's all these weird pipes coming out of the ground here. And then there's like this drainage canal or ditch behind me. I'm not really sure if this was, it almost looks like this was some kind of resort because then there's like this thing. Like there was definitely a lot more here at one point than there is now. But, you know, man, it's pretty friggin' awesome as it is right now. <laughs> 360 Pano, woo! Ha ha ha. Nevada, y'all. <laughs> okay, let's go check the temp on the soaking tub and see how this stacks up. 102. Hey, isn't that exactly what I said I thought it was? I'm pretty good if I do say so myself. All right, well, I guess I could try putting my food in that first spring because it was pretty hot and well I don't know I mean at least it'll warm it up a little bit let's see I just need to get my Indian food which I already had the foresight to clamp together <laughs> so that I can tie it up and it won't float away oh by the way if you're wondering tonight we're having madras lentils with ancient grains super healthy and despite the fact that I know I have a bunch of paracord somewhere, I couldn't find it, so I'm just gonna use half of a ratchet strap. Okay, let's see if I can plop this down and heat it up. Okay, well, I'm just gonna throw her in any old wear. <laughs> and then I'll hook her to the fence line there so she don't float away. And well, see what time it is. You probably can't see that, but it's 6.08. It gets dark around 6.30 up here this time of year. So, gosh, I only have about a half hour to soak. Uh, and then I'm going to have to go back and finish setting. I mean, I didn't even set anything up. You know, I didn't make my bed or anything. So I'll go do that before I go for a nighttime soak. Okay, my wine is right here where I left it. Now it's time to take a bath. <laughs> Hang my robe here on the old robe stand. Put my watch in the pocket. Come on over here and get in, I guess. It looks like it might be a little slippery in there because of the algae. I have to be careful. Oh, gosh, yeah, it feels pretty good, though. Whoa! <laughs> what I say, man, you got to be careful in these, uh, with these algae-covered hot springs. They do get slippery. And I don't see any kind of scrubby brush or anything to clean it out, unfortunately. I guess I should start traveling with one of those. That way I can, you know, do my own hot spring maintenance when I get to these places. Oh God, it feels so amazing though. Let me just, I gotta be real careful because A, I don't want to slip. <laughs> well, and B, I don't want to have a nip slip because you know what happens when you let slip a nip. <laughs> YouTube has a conniption fit. <laughs> oh yeah. This is the life. Wow, man, this, this hot spring actually turned out to be way cooler than I was expecting. Like I said, uh, one of my viewers, shout out to Paula. Uh, she was here a few days ago and she sent me a pic or two of this tub and I don't know, maybe it was the direction she shot it in. It didn't look like there was any greenery around it. I was honestly just expecting to be in the middle of a dusty cow pasture with no plants whatsoever. So this is a huge surprise, huge bonus. I'm already a ginormous fan of this hot spring. And well, you know, I kind of like how busted it is. Uh, if, it, if somebody came along and fixed it up and made it too nice and fancy, well, then they wouldn't let me shoot a video of it. Whee! Oh my God, it feels so good. I was hiking around all morning shooting this other video I made where I camped last night and man, I am tired. This feels amazing. But you know, now that I think about it, I'm kind of, oh, I see where, the, okay, look at this. I was just kind of wondering like how the outflow worked and how clean this was, but it looks like because, well, I don't know if you can tell, but because this tub is sitting at a pretty dramatic angle, all the water is flowing back out. Uh, well, the water's coming in that black pipe, but the notch that the black pipe is going through, the water's coming back out there. So it does have a pretty good flow. Uh, and if you had a scrubby brush, like I said, uh, you could get this thing real clean in no time. Oh, wow, man, the sunset is wild. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it. Let me turn my camera around. Holy moly, look at that. That's a beautiful autumn sunset. 
with those trees silhouetted in the front. Ugh. And it goes all the way across to my cute little rig, which, by the way, on my way here, <laughs> my odometer finally hit 100,000 miles. Uh, yay! <laughs> Um, I mean, I, I've maintained it really well and I just had a bunch of stuff done. So everything's running tip top. But <laughs> that being said, 100k already, yikes. <laughs> I'm gonna have to be more judicious about the places I go to shoot videos from now on. You know, like, <laughs> well, for the last couple of years, I would just pretty much drive anywhere no matter how long it took just to shoot a video. <laughs> like this hot spring, I went 120 miles out of my way <laughs> to go soak here. <laughs> But I mean, you tell me, this is friggin' worth it, right? So 120 plus one, 240 mile round trip. That's so oh, three quarters of a tank of gas. So with gas prices right now, that's about 40 bucks. It cost me about 40 bucks to come to this hot spring. Gosh, when you crunch the numbers like that, it makes me wonder about myself. Well, the one downside that I've noticed to this hot spring so far is mosquitoes. Now, mosquitoes don't typically bother me too much. <laughs> I guess I have bitter blood. <laughs> but that being said, they do bite me and I don't wanna get covered in mosquito bites, so. And plus I'm hungry, I'm curious to see. It's gotta have been at least 20 minutes since I put that food in the pond over there. I'm curious to see if it's warmed up. And three, well, I kinda wanna come back here when it gets dark, dark and soak. By then the mosquitoes should be gone and, well, what do you think will be in the sky? a billion stars oh hey you know what i noticed uh this milk jug that's hanging on the robe hook has a scrubby brush in it so there is a brush here so in the morning oh it's not a very good brush though it's little but better than nothing in the morning i can give her a quick scrub it's kind of too late now it's too dark there's one of the very few beer cans i saw here there's a lot of garbage in this field but it looks like old rustic garbage you know i only saw i think two beer cans and i'll pick those up and take them with me on my way out in the morning Okay, I just grab my headlamp to light my way back over to the old hot spring where my dinner is theoretically warming up. <laughs> oh man, it's gonna be nice to soak in there once all these mosquitoes go to bed. <laughs> I mean, I, I know I won't last long because I'm tired out a long day, but gosh, just for a little bit, it'll be nice. Okay, here's my little, oh man, like you can still see the beautiful sunset. Ah, oh, what a day. All right, let's pull out the food and see how it is. Let me get my little leash. <laughs> Pull out the food, hoist it up, let's feel it. Oh, it's pretty hot to the touch. I think that's hot enough to eat. Hooray, it worked. <laughs> I just love not having to fire up my stove. Not only am I going to save fuel, I'm going to save time because I'm starving. I just want to eat. I don't want to have to sit around and boil water. Okay, well, gosh, I'm just friggin' exhausted, man. I've been on the go all dang day. I got my dinner ready over here and I just want to chill and drink a glass of wine and eat my dinner. So I'm signing off for a bit. Okay, well, I'm not gonna lie. It was really hard to force myself out of my cozy car after I ate dinner and had a full belly and a glass or two of wine. But I just feel like there's no way I can camp at this amazing hot spring and not go for a soak at night. So I got robed up, got my floaty, and I'm going to head back over to the pool and see what it's like at night. Okay, hiking along in the pitch black darkness. I haven't heard any animals out here. I'm guessing there must be, well, there's obviously cows. There's seen lots of cow poo. Uh, and I saw some wild horses driving in, but I, I haven't seen anything since I've been here. Oh my god, this feels so amazing. Oh, I'm never going to want to get out of here. <sighs> wow. Man, if you've never soaked in a stock tank full of hot water in the middle of a cow pasture, in the middle of nowhere in Nevada, <laughs> well, my friend, you haven't lived. Okay, it's imagination time. You can hear the water. It's 102 degrees. Imagine how it feels to be soaking in it. Oh, God, it feels amazing. 
releases all the tension of the day, whatever aches and pains you might be suffering, melting away. And then you tilt your head back and look up at the sky. Oh my gosh. You see a billion stars, planets, the Milky Way. Ah, it's amazing. Oh, that was amazing. I only soaked for about I don't know, 10 minutes because, well, I'm tired and full. And, you know, I want to get up at sunrise and come back here for a sunrise soak. Wouldn't that be amazing? I mean, I know I always say that, but I did actually get up at sunrise this morning at the location I was at and shot sunrise footage. So, hey, if I go to bed early enough, which I think it's only about, gosh, 8 p.m., 8.30, well, I ought to be able to do it again. Why not? It's interesting. There's this weird light in the distance. Let me show you. Actually, you can't even see it. And I just realized it's my car. <laughs> While I was floating in the pool, I saw it out of the corner of my eye in the distance. I thought it was the moon rising because it's been a pretty bright moon or it was a pretty bright moon last night. <laughs> but now I can see quite clearly it's just the Lucy Lanterns in my car, in my cozy car, beckoning me to bed. <laughs> So there I shall go, and I'll catch up with you in the morning. By the way, do you like how I put my headlamp against my floaty? It creates this really cool ambient cactus light. <laughs> Nighty night. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Man, what a friggin' place to wake up. <laughs> mm. <sighs> mm. Coffee and a hot spring. And, well, it's not technically sunrise. <laughs> it was really cold last night, so I couldn't quite force myself out of bed for a real sunrise. But I got up just after sunrise and you maybe can even see there's still steam coming off the pools it's still chilly but let me tell you something it feels friggin amazing in this water ah oh, i spent a very peaceful night nobody else rolled in just me and well i know i saw wild horses and there's obviously cows and probably coyotes but i didn't hear anything all night it was just perfectly peaceful. I really, really like this hot spring. I mean, the water is nice and hot. The tub's in pretty good shape. You know, there's free camping on site, but it's not just all of that. I just friggin' love the bleakness of this landscape, especially when I woke up this morning and it was still really kind of overcast and the sun wasn't quite up yet. It just looks like you're in, uh, Gosh, well, I mean, there are mountains in the background, so you, you couldn't quite be in like Kansas or something, but man, I just love those trees right there and this big meadow. Just a gorgeous landscape. All right, well, I was starting to turn into a prune, so I figured it was time to get out. I gave the tub a quick scrub. There really isn't a whole lot of trash around here. I mean, there's this beer can. I think there's one over by my campsite that I'll get on my way out, but it's a pretty tidy place. Anyway, I'm gonna go uh, get dressed and pack my car up. And then I wanna kind of poke around this meadow a little bit because gosh, it looks like there's all kinds of weird busted up stuff out here that bears investigating. Okay, well, I hiked all around this field to see if there was any signs of what was going on here. And well, it looks like, well, the hot springs back there. And I guess the source is probably right around where the spring itself is. I'll go check that out in a minute. But it does, uh, the creek does kind of flow out into this sort of marsh. It's kind of interesting. It terminates at this dry lake bed. 
And you can probably even see uh, standing water on the lake bed. So the lake bed actually does have a little lake in the middle of it. But let me tell you something, look how desolate this is all around it. There is nobody out here. I mean, all that's left now is an unholy assortment of garbage just everywhere. It's crazy. There's just piles of it all over the place, including this giant friggin' patch of beer cans that, gosh, made me feel silly for picking up those two cans by the spring. But hey, every bit helps. But as for back here at the spring, I mean, it's pretty clear to me that there was something pretty substantial here because that's definitely a rock tub and it's got that weird cement or whatever it is divider. Uh, and then that other pond doesn't look, I was gonna say it doesn't look natural either because the, the walls are so, you know, perfectly straight. So gosh, maybe there was like two different hot spring tubs here at one time. And this is just kind of like what's left. It looks like the source is coming from up here. Oh yeah, here's the source pool. I don't have my thermometer with me and I'm too lazy to go get it. I'm sure it's piping hot though, because uh, by the time it gets down there, it's 102. So probably a little couple degrees higher than that maybe. I mean, there's a couple of uh, pretty significant piles of wreckage across the road. I'll just stop and check those out real quick before I leave. Maybe that'll give us a clue. Okay, well, I already kind of looked at this wreckage last night. What's this? Oh, it's just part of an engine. I thought it was a little mini accordion. I got all excited. <laughs> Love my musical instruments. Anyways, I was saying, I already kind of looked at this collapsed trailer last night, so I won't waste too much time on it. Okay, but then up a little ways, there's another, well, looks like it was another pretty big trailer that's completely collapsed now. Oh, what's this? Oh, here's another pond. I mean, again, I don't have my thermometer with me, so I can't tell you if it's a warm spring pond, and I'm sure not getting in it to find out. Ugh. But, I mean, both of these trailers were pretty big, so there must have been at least, I don't know, five or six, seven people living out here, I would guess. I mean, I suppose it could have just been two lonely bachelors. Holy wow. I mean, it's all just ruins now. Nothing at all left to tell us about the people who lived here and why they left. Oh, well, might have to remain a mystery. I can't seem to figure it out. And well, unfortunately, I don't feel like stumbling around this field for much longer. I mean, between all the soaking and walking and shooting video, I have worked up quite an appetite. And well, that's actually the one major drawback to this hot spring at least if you're coming from Vegas, <laughs> and that is... You have to pass by Socorro's Burger Hut on the way home, and I can never pass by this place without stopping to stuff my face. Uh, yum! So bad for my waistline, but so delicious.